Hello everyone. Welcome back. My name is Naresh Chetri. In this video, as you already know, we are talking about the RSA algorithm and that stands for Ron Rives, Eddie Samir and Leonard Edelman. So Rives, Samir and Edelman, it is a kind of algorithm that help us to implement encryption and decryption. So there are seven steps. So as you have already seen over here from one to seven, which is pretty much easy and simple. We will try to understand that. And after understanding, we will program implementation in the Python programming language. So as the figure suggests, you have known pretty much that you start with the sender as Alice. She wants to send the message. She wants to send the message to the Bob, which is on, on the receiver end. So the sender in Alice and receiver in Bob. As you have already the algorithm start with two prime numbers normally here prime number is p and q the two thing to compute the public key and it's e over here and the private key is d the public key computed in step number four we will see how exact we will compute that and the private key the step number five we will see exact how it is computed for now just understand the both user that means Alice and Bob has a pair of keys their public key is E and private key is D okay to encrypt the message we use public key and to decrypt the message we use private key which is so let us start with Number one, the selection of two prime number. So P and Q here selected three and seven must be prime and P is should not be equal to Q. That means we cannot take two, three or two, seven. Okay. So here we have used the function. Reverse Samir Edelman is in separate module to make it easy for to apply the RSA approach. The second step is to compute N, which you will see N is the product of P and Q. And the third step is to compute the T dot N or the fourth number. So which is also pretty simple. So computed at P minus one into Q minus one. So P minus one, when we take three, three minus one, two in seven minus one, six. So two into six, that comes 12. So these are the most important steps. So step number two and step number three, how we generated N and T. After generating N and T, it's pretty much simple. Then we have to generate the public key. So on the public key, we will apply the GC function. So the GCD function, apply that GCD function over the math module, which can directly compute the greatest common divisor of the two integer we provided. So what are the two integer we provided? So we start with the for loop in the range 2 and 12. So if we provide something like this, so the greatest common divisor is 2. And we keep on looping that. We increase the value of i with 1. So when we pass 3 and 12, T and E, and the GCD is 3. So we do until this, we get the value as 1. Whenever we get the value of 1, that means our E is equal to I. That means there, E is equal to I equal to 5. We will break on that. So break means we will stop over there. So we'll see the code. We'll calculate the private key. So the private key is pretty much similar. Here we use the while loop. Inside the while loop, we use the if condition. We multiply, we start J with a 0, multiply with E. Here, multiplying J with E means multiplying J with public key. So that means multiplying J with 5 and we do the, the modulus with the T, give us 0. In this way, we continue. Another time we do 1 into 5 because the value of J increases from 0, 1, keeps on going. We get 5, we get 10. At the end, when it reached to 5 into 5 module 12, that means 5 into 5 is 25, module 12, so 12 into 224 then the remainder is was one then the condition is satisfied that means t equal to five and we then break it okay. so last we have two things so we compute the cipher text as the encryption so plain text raised to the power of e we pass the plain text at 16 raised to the power of e means raised to the power of five we get a plain text as four and then we compute the contrary we again compute the plain text on the receiver end we use d and n as you have already said. private key n is the n is the third number we computed the product of p and q and we again get back the, the 16. so you can see over here so the plain text cipher text and then plain text okay so it's pretty much simple so it will be more clear after you see the code the code is here and this is the main file or rsa algorithm that so these are exactly the same step i have just commented over here what i have done is i have imported the module so it is the separate python module it's rsa just the sort call the rsa the reverse samir and adelman function here i have separated into two so i won't go in the second call just to let you to try to understand the first call. Call the function. We pass the value 3, 7, and 16. So 3 is P on the side of Alice. 
seven is q bob and 16 is a plain text okay then when we go to the rsa you already understand so yes two and yes three so here is step two and step three which is so n is the product of p and q seven into three twenty one and t we get twelve as we have already seen in the ppt so three minus one into seven minus one twelve then only comes a little bit gcd which means we are computing the public key so the public key e where t is already the quotient okay that means we are going in the range of two and t so the t means we already know range in 2 and 12 we apply the condition over here compute 2 and 12 so gives the greatest common divisor of the two integers as i already said 2 3 4 and when it comes to 5 then when the condition 1 the condition is satisfied the e is provided as i that means e equal to i and we break outside of the pot in this way we got public key now when it comes to the private key to compute the t it's pretty much similar as we have talked we start j with 0 and we keep adding after each while loop. So while the condition is true, checking the condition, 0 into 5 module 12, we get 0, 1 into 5. So keeps on continuing, we get those values. And until we get the value 1, when the value is 5, Talk 5 into 5, 25 module 12, that's 24 and 12 to the 24 remainder 1. So remainder 1, when j is 5, the value is satisfied that means d equal to j so d equal to j means d equal to 5 here and we break outside of then we just print it okay so whatever the number provided so prime number of alice prime number of bob third computed number n and t and then public and the private key and the message who you already know we pass at 16 and then the last two steps is the step six okay we compute the encryption we apply the power function to the message msg so that's why you we say 16 raised to the power 5, we get this number 1048576. When we do the modulus, the remainder we get 4. And on the reverse side, when we do the decryption, we do the same thing raised to the power of the ciphertext. So ciphertext 4 raised to the power 5, 1024, 1024. Then when we do modulus, we get a 16, which the 16 is the is the original plate text message. And see, this runs for the both call we don't have to worry about the both so i just want to focus on the on the first call so where we pass 3 7 and 16 3 and 7 so and then the original plain text scripted cipher text is 4 and the decrypted plain text is the 16 on the end of the ball. although we have to use the use the two big prime numbers so for the sake of example i have just used 7 and 3 to make you understand and in this way i have done again the function call second taking 53 and 59 which results in in this way that's that's the same function we applied plain text then encrypted cipher text and the decrypted plain text i hope that helps and thank you for watching